Ja, 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 ja. Test, test, test. Previously on Kimba TV. Yeah, so if this does like a bearish retest on 425 or I would really like um like a 428 point blank, I'm I'm trying to figure out if this is worth it. Boys, 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 boys. What we doing? How we doing? Who them boys at? Where them boys at? Uh, crap, he says, sorry, Kimba, a little late. What's the plan if you don't mind me sharing? If you don't mind sharing? Yeah, I mean, um, brother, nothing. Did you watch the Friday stream? Did you watch the Friday stream? Because for me, nothing has changed. Um, I, I kind of, um, I explained why I, was, I wasn't bullish anymore. Um, and even without the explanation, I told you, um, I'm not longing here, I'm not longing here, I'm not longing here. And I told you what I would do. Uh, I would be looking for a short, right? So uh, look in the Discord, but I shared my position. I'm in a short from 42.7. Alrighty, I had more limits. All I had limits all the way up to 850, but I only got filled for 100, and um, yeah, and that's it. And I and I think um, I think the CME gap is gonna get filled. Not only that, it's gonna go lower. So I I would love to get a uh, TP around 37, okay? Because then that would be like half a mil on the max C. But if you've been watching me long enough, you know damn well that I don't get my full rotation all the time. I don't get what I want all the time. It's maybe 15, 20% at most. Most of the time I'm gonna get round tripped or stop lost and tiny profit. Right, so I'm gonna be going to sleep now and I'm gonna put my stop loss behind the golden pocket and, and starting at the golden pocket all the way through 786 on the local swing high, swing low. Alrighty, but um, I'm just gonna, it's tiny profit if it comes and gets me. Alrighty. But um, I would think it's building like a uh, like a symmetrical triangle. Can you guys see it? Like on the one hour and the four hour, it's it's building like a, a symmetrical triangle. So the pressure is building up, and there's a shit ton of open interest, um, and uh, that that's gonna get squeezed probably. And so if you zoom out and you kind of take a look, you can kind of see that. Uh, there might be a little bit too many longs. If you were to, if you were to think, okay, there's 600, 500 to 600 million just on one particular exchange like Bybit, and you're looking for 150, 180, like 200 mil to get cleared out, then that means that out of the 600, where is the imbalance for that 200 mil, 150, 180 mil? If I were to take a look at an exchange like Bybit, I would actually say that it's probably the longs that are overextended. It's like 60-40. So it's hard to say who's really fucked, but 60-40 is just enough for a 200 mil, 180 mil, you know, 250 mil per exchange squeeze. Um, so I don't know. I would love to um, see the price start to fall towards CME gap when traditional markets open. And the follow through, I would like to see that uh, punctured. And eventually, I think we roll all the way through to like 37, 38. All right. But um, I'm, I have a pretty good entry. And so the worst case scenario, I lose like half of my unrealized profits. All righty. And if I wake up tomorrow and I realize that I got stopped out, then I'm always going to be able to read the data and take shots at where I think is a good spot. So do you plan on hedging or adding to your short? No, that's a negative. 
I'm gonna just sit back, relax, and wait and see. So, you know, you have to be opportunistic and you have to take the shots when you get them crappy. And um, if you really listen to what I'm saying on Friday, there's no way that you would expect me to be in a long, right? Unless there was some miracle, like ridiculously uh, unavoidable CVD hidden bull div or some crazy shit like that, which did not happen, right? But aside from some bullish miracle, you can kind of tell, like, I, I don't know how many times I said I'm not longing. I don't care. I'm not long. I don't care where it comes down. I don't care if it's a, a like a, you know, regular bull div. Like, it would have to be some miraculously obvious, like, build up for me to long. All right. So, and I told y'all on Friday what my plan was. Everything that I kind of explained and anticipated was there. Um, hidden bear div um the open interest um order flow e everything was looking pretty good i wish it went higher because then i could be flexing like a 200 and two or you know 185 bitcoin position but um i only got a i got the first limit fit uh filled so you know it's not as big as i would have wanted but um we'll see if you know we'll see it we'll take it level by level there's still a chance that the cme gap does not get filled and it gets front ran and 40 bounces so earlier i was saying it could bounce at 40 then it could also just cme gap fill and bounce but i think the most probable would be that it actually loses the cme gap fill and heads towards like 38 or 37. So I think that's the most probable, but just because even if I correctly identify the most probable situation, it still doesn't guarantee that it's going to play out. So um, I would say crappy. I don't know if you heard me earlier, but you see that there's a CME gap to the upside, right? It would not surprise me, nor would I uh, get stopped out if it does this, right? Um, you know that there's a CME gap to the upside. Any tips? Or, well, look at the CME gap to the upside. It would not surprise me one bit if the market's open, it goes, runs back up, it fills it, and then it resumes back down. Obviously, you're not going to put blind limits in, right? And you would want just more than a CME gap to identify your level. So if there is some sort of single print, TPO, value area high, value area low, or point of control, right if there's a volume based tpo val or excuse me uh, volume based value area high value area low or point of control ideally if you have like a single print or like a point of control ideally both a tpo point of control and um volume point of control um lining up with like a fib especially 75786 that would be beautiful so try to look for overlap beyond that cme gap 75786 would be the best I only have a little bit of time, so let's just dive into this bitch. Esbig, Brimberg. Well, so, I mean, uh, this is the way that I would look at it. Um, What do you guys see on this? Hold on a second. I got to pull up OBS. You guys seen... Yeah, so Reigns says, Do you think Biddy can take a last dance at 42.5? No. If it's at 42.5, it's bullish. Roger that. So, um, yeah, it's going to maintain this. If it's bearish, um, turning, starting to break in and turning this into support would mean we're going to go back higher because then you're looking at a failed auction right here. So, um we were kind of talking about it last night, but um, I could totally see like a CME gap fill, um, swing high, swing low, you know, like seven five, seven eight six. You can see the volume. Um, so yeah, like maybe that with a bear div would be really really dope, and maybe like another short opportunity. Um, but it, it might not even grab the CME gap and, uh, leave it for later. So 41.8 is like a reasonable level of, uh, resistance. Um, and same with, uh, 
So this, this Kimba box short would kind of be interesting to think about. But, um, but that being said, if you can turn, I would say, 41.6, 41.7, 41.8 into support, then, um, then you don't want to short 42.5 because it's going to go a lot higher than that. Like, um, the, if you're a bull, I think your best case scenario is something like, let's sweep this bitch and let's sweep the 45 on Coinbase. And it would be like, uh, 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 oh, oh, oh. But the the um, structure has shifted now, so even if it were to like go all the way up, you know, it would still be a short. But um, that's maybe like best case is a scenario for bulls, I think. <clears throat> Roger that. So if it's going to be bearish, like the forty one eight to forty two has to be resistance. Coke Zero says, I'm in short from 42.520, already TP2 times, but holding some sum. Uh, nice, Coke Zero. So um, I would just say 41.842, 42, lots of confluence. I'm not going to really explain why. I'm, I'm sure most of the OGs can under understand why. Um, the tools you want to use would be like TPO indicator, volume profile, fixed range volume profile, and mathematical levels. CME gap as well, but 41.8 through 42 is very big resistance and should be big re should be resistance if we're going to continue to the downside. Um, you know, when price when the price of an asset is going up, but the open interest remains stagnant, be like basically as it did when we were just within 500 to 600. It's not that good because it means that there's people that are closing and there's people that are opening, and which usually means like, you know, the right traders are closing their positions, but you have retail starting to FOMO in towards the later end of the trade. Um, so that liquidity, structure change, all that kind of leads to bearishness. And so if you remember uh, my whole little spiel, I said I wasn't gonna long anything um and um that um i would you know expect this to probably go to the cme gap if not lower um if you want to talk about home run targets and lower targets then i would try to swing this my last tp would be like 35k which would be fucking insane um but my probably significant would be like 37 um, and I, and I do think there is a possibility that we could bounce from the CME gap. And so, like I said on Friday, ultimately I have to see the reaction at the CME gap, you know, but, um, I would not put any blind limits there because high probability those fuckers are going to get run over. Unfortunately, been there, done that. Uh, don't kill the messenger. I'm just telling y'all what I've seen, what we've seen together many, 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 many times. So... Even like on Friday, I was saying how um, I've already been in this situation, remember? And I was like, I'm not longing that. I'm not longing that. I'm not longing here because I've already done that. And what did I say? I, I've gotten round tripped and, and look what happened. So I've already taken these longs all that long, that long, you know, try to get that long. I, I've already done all that shit. Usually just goes. So. Um, yabba dabba do. Bullish failed auction means well, I mean, you can have a failed auction either way. So, this could be like you could have some sort of like uh, Alcoman's trident. And we and we were talking about this when I was lettucing up like 30 minutes ago. Swing high, swing low, swing high. That could be like golden pocket, like 41,000, you know. So, this could come all the way back, golden pocket mini 0.5 get rejected the local golden pocket of the golden pocket rejection come back to the um the previous local golden pocket and then it would be aquaman's try to and you could go and that would be uh like a failed auction it would only be a failed auction if 
Remember, we drew it to the other side, but if it breaks this, ooh, that's a nice little line to, uh, for it being on a mouse pad. Mouse pad. So yeah, that would be breaking this would be a failed auction. And then so you might see me try to get in on a long. All right, so you guys are pretty good caught up on the TA. Pretty simple, right? 41.8, 42 should be resistance. You have a potential hidden bear div and a regular bear div um, stacking on top of each other. You've got point of control volume uh, confluencing with mathematical Fibonacci levels. Um, all of those things um, are historically relevant. Uh, if for some reason, if you start to have a bullish edge, like, um, you know, somewhere between 41.6, 41.7, you, you see how like the levels change. For me, 41.8 through four, uh, 42,000 is resistance. But if you're going to start to get a little bit funky with it and you're going to reclaim uh, levels, then you're going to start to build CVD edge or some sort of edge before the resistance level. So that's why I'm saying 41.6, 41.7. Hence, if you break above a golden pocket and then go back to bullish retest to golden pocket, that might be a little thangity thang thing, right? But if 41.6, 41.7 starts to build like a bullish edge, you're and, and you start to have candle closes above, then whatever you want to call it, CCV setup, if you're a chart champ, uh, if you're a Kimba Gang whale, uh, full rotation, and you're going to start to look at mid 42s. And then at that point, you're looking at a whole stop loss hunt all the way back up to the highs again. So 41 point, you know, 8, 41, 42,000, we're all, it's literally right here in front of our eyes and we get to kind of see what it going to do. Will it be resistance or is it going to try to reclaim that level and then skyrocket back up? Alrighty, so um, I would say that if you re, if you can reclaim 41.6, 41.7, 41.8, start to get a bullish edge, then you're going to look for mid 42s, right? Full rotation play kind of shit. Um, if, um, 41.8, 42,000 is indeed resistance and you have a potential for a regular bear div, like you could make a higher high, go to 42,000, get the CME gap, fill and then go. And you could have a smaller time frame, regular bear div inside of a higher time frame, hidden bear div. And those have now been working just like how the hidden bull divs were working. Um, and if, if indeed 42,000 is resistance, 41,800 uh, is resistance, then your as a bear, you want to break 40,000. It's like 39,800 or whatever, theoret uh, technically, but breaking 40,000 and I think um, my TP would be 37 and 35. Um, cautiously watching the CME gap fill, but um, historically speaking, I think uh, it depends on how many fuckers put blind limits there. If there's enough blind limits there, just blind commitment, that thing's going to get run over, in my opinion. Just like I, we were talking about on Friday. That's about it. That's about it. Um, Danny says, can you explain when you consider a level as reclaimed? That's a great question, uh, Danny K. That's something that you would want to ask your fellow brothers and sisters too, because there isn't really like one set rule on uh, right or wrong. Um, as most things in TA, the best way to figure out the validation or invalidation technique is whatever it has been working in the past. So, for example, if you like this, and so this would be applicable, for example, for like a swing failure pattern, right? What time frame, you know, is it a 15 minute candle body close? Is it a 30 minute body candle close? Everybody asks the same question. It's, it's whatever it's been doing. Some people would say that it has to actually build um, like a smaller time frame um, hidden bull div or a uh, regular bull div. Um, some people, it's all about just time. Um, so I would say that use everything in the book to try and 
uh, data-wise prove or explain that it's reclaimed, if you don't have any sort of data that's telling you, then you can always resort back to time, which is like 30 minutes above this level or one hour above this level. The less um, conf thank you, baby. The less confluence you have, the more time that you're gonna want to spend above a certain level. Willie D says it's been super cool seeing the sweep levels become super important levels of in, uh, interest the last few months for sure. And like, um, if you are in a long, um, I feel you because there's there's a lot of bad highs up there. And so imagine all of those like wicks getting swept to the upside, right? But let's not get carried away. Like we've always been paying attention to the. Uh, the to the opposite side like the 33 35 all of those longs that could get stopped out too and you've and we've been tracking it on the uh, liquidity maps so no real surprises i think tim shout outs to you tim thank you for that tim tim any questions before i dip swat bay any questions before i dip toy haynes lorenzo e-dog my pleasure you guys xbit jingao Seniorki, Xbit, <laughs> shout outs to you, Xbit. I'll check in with you guys a little bit later tonight. It'll be interesting to see how this plays plays out, you know. Will it end up being a uh, this? You know, will that be a regular bear div? Will that be a hidden bear div? Um, will it even get back up here? You know, swing low, swing high golden pocket bounce and then right now swing high swing low golden pocket or kimba box rejection within a bigger local rejection so yeah i'm gonna be rooting for you guys do your best watch the open interest you know what it is hazel says what's your view about 44 45k wall is it possible to fill those level first um, absolutely, Hayes. So I'm going to dip out and I'll, I'll answer your question before I dip out, but definitely rewatch because the, uh, the organic, uh, content only like 30, 40 minutes. Um, Hayes, the way that I would look at it is, and, and just really let this kind of sink in. Don't just let it like go in one year and out the other, because it is a really simplistic thing to think about really that simple for me so if you were here on friday as soon as the bullish level where it should have bounced from didn't i told y'all on friday i'm not longing here here or here if you remember so conceptually right now it's the same 41.8 42,000 should be resistance now if it breaks above that if it does some sort of bullish cvd any sort of data-driven bullish edge starts to build up around 41.6, 41.7, 41.8, 41.9, 42, and it looks like it's going to try to turn that zone into support, then 45k is most is probably going to happen. But you need to get above that critical resistance and turn that bitch into support first. And so um, if you go back and you rewatch um, this, you're going to see how I drew that your best case as a bull would be to get back up here and then do like a failed auction and then lose it. That's possible. Okay. Anything is really possible, right? So it's really about, I think, understanding, you know, it's like on the highway, you know, you have like those tolls where you have to stop and you have to pay a toll, right? Those are the levels of interest. So do the market makers have enough to go through that toll? You know, whether it's they're going to go through and have the retail pay the toll because they're going to have uh, it's going to be a squeeze or is there actually like open interest going up and positions opening? So this bitch ain't going to go nowhere uh, it, near 44, 45 until it breaks through the 48, 18, 42 level first. Roger that. And uh, we're not going to go to uh, 37, 35 until we see what the reaction is at 39 on the CME gap fill. So even though I'm looking for 37, 35, I have to pay respect to the 39 CME gap fill and be objective on the fact that it could bounce there. 
Yeah, I wish it was a lot easier than that, but um, that's the way that I like to play it. I like to figure out where it could have pivots and then just try to identify if it has a high probability of pivoting or no. So if I'm already in a position and I'm getting to a level where I thought maybe it could, like if I'm gonna short and I feel like it's a level where it could potentially bounce from, once we get there, but if, but if the data says uh, lower chance of bouncing, then I can keep my short running. You know, if the data says uh, there's a good chance of bouncing, maybe like a hidden bull div, regular bull div, confluence with CME, confluence with uh, S&P, then I need to start thinking about putting my stop loss in profit. So Gene Gauss says, it blows my mind when I place 41.8 uh, uh, HRA and it coincides with local 668. Hey, math is the math, brother. Okay, I think that's it. You guys stay safe now. I'm out of here. Have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. And I would say in about 9, 10 hours, I'll uh, do a little uh, IRL uh, Latuche before, night, uh, before going to sleep. Sound good for love and peace, Marnello. I'll see you guys in a little bit, though. Remember, Thursday and Friday will be full schedule, but uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I gotta, I gotta do it from via laptopa, laptopia. Have a great day. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Peace, everybody. <laughs>